So how do we go from this to this? Yes, that's right. It's time to go outside and flow in the cold weather. Drex here from Drex Factor Poise, sharing with you the love of poise spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today I'm going to share with you some of my secrets for bundling up for flowing outdoors during the winter. Now, before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, and Ultrapoi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I have down in the description of this video. And special thanks to the non-business friends of the channel, Leigh Machinsky and Pekka Pekunen. Thank you so very much for supporting my channel, my work, and my mission. So let's be real. Flowing when it gets cold out is kind of a bummer. You have the option to either flow indoors and deal with a really cramped space, or you can bundle up to go outside and you'll also lose a little bit of mobility there. Now, none of these are particularly good options, but if we want to keep our flow going during the cold months, we have to embrace some of them. So I'm going to do a series here talking about the different ways that we can make that happen. Starting today with how I bundle up when I'm going outside to flow when it is cold out. Today, it is in the 40s here in DC, which I realize is not that cold compared to many other places, but it's cold for me. What can I say? My ancestors came from above the Arctic Circle, but somehow the epigenetics just did not work out for me. Now, I don't have long johns or anything like that, but I do have a couple underlayers that I really like to use, so I will go ahead and share them with you. First and foremost is this really awesome Polar Max shirt. It is uh, made of some form of synthetic, so I try and avoid this when I'm going to be spinning fire. But if I'm just going to be spinning with like my sock poi or contact poi, it's a great option. I also still do the 90s style of putting the long sleeve underneath the short sleeve. So give me just one second to switch those around. So what I like about using underlayers like this is that they're pretty sleek. Like my biggest priority here is trying to hold on to freedom of movement as much as possible. There's a ton of options out there for making us warm, but those that allow us to stay warm as well as allowing us freedom of movement are a little bit rarer. And this approach definitely holds on to that value. Next up, we are going to add my favorite sweater. I cannot remember when or where I got this. It's by Dockers. It is uh, really, really, really warm. It's cotton and nylon. Again, I don't wear this with fire, uh, but it does give me another layer of protection out there in the cold. So let's put that on. All right, cool. So next up, let's talk about bottoms. So this is a trick that I picked up when I was still doing dance lessons regularly. I noticed a lot of dancers who would wear multiple layers of pants. Now, my bottom layer here is just going to be these Adidas track pants that I have held onto forever and a day. These are at least a decade old and they've seen better days, but they're really, really good at locking in heat and blocking out the wind, which those are two very, very important things for me in the winter. For the top layer, I usually like to have something that's a little bit heavier in material. Uh, this is a set of cargo pants from Union Bay, and the thing I like most about these is that they work both over the track pants as well as just by themselves. They have a slim enough fit that I can wear them day to day, but they also have enough room that I can wear them over the track pants and it doesn't look too out of the ordinary. So let me put these on. Ta-da! All right, so next up, let's talk about the top layer for my top. So I usually like to go with hoodies because, well, I'm a hoodie guy and usually they're pretty sleek and uh, are good for freedom of movement. So these are my two go-tos. Uh, this one right here on my left is actually a travel hoodie from Bobox. Um, it's a little tight in the shoulders. I didn't get exactly the right size. Uh, so this tends to be the one that I use a little bit less. But the thing that it's really good at is uh, it's a great windbreaker. And so if it's super windy outside, this is what I want to go with. In most cases, though, I go with this this hoodie that I got from Tibetan Gift Exchange in Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco. And as you can see, it has seen a lot of better days and it's been patched many times. But what I like about it, number one, is uh, I think it looks cool. Number two is that the inside layer here is fleece, so it is way warmer than it actually looks. Um, there's plenty of pocket space in here. Um, and also just you know, sentimental value. This has been with me forever and it's kind of like an old friend at this point. So it's not super windy outside today. I'm gonna to go with this option. 
Cool, so next up, I have plenty of different winter hats, but the one that is kind of my nuclear option is this that I got one winter up in Boston. Um, it is extraordinarily fluffy on the inside. Uh, it is one of the warmest hats that I have ever owned, and uh, it sure does do the trick. So I've also kind of become legendary for my mask usage in the past couple years, and one of my great discoveries in doing so is that masks are also really, really good for dealing with the cold. So I actually tend to wear these pretty frequently, not just because I think I might go to the grocery store to grab something after I'm done flowing, but also because it just keeps my face warm outside, and I kind of like that. So let's add that, shall we? All right, so now let's talk gloves. Um, I have two different sets that I use regularly, uh, one of which is a little bit slimmer and a little bit sleeker. These are the ones that I tend to use during the spring and fall. Uh, they're really, really nice because they're pretty close to just having bare hands, and I really like the texture on them. Uh, I can actually do gunslingers in these, which is fantastic. Uh, they are made by, it looks like, Agent, and um, I have a thicker set that I use during the winter months that are better when it gets colder, and uh, uh, because we're in the 40s today, I'm going to go with the thicker set. They are made by Ankier. I'll, I'll link to all these things in the description. All right, friends. I think I'm finally ready to go outside and flow. Care to join me? Hey friends, so I am back indoors now and warm again, which is amazing, and I think I'm going to call this one a success. Now you might have noticed that at a certain point I actually got too warm and I actually shed a layer, which is fine by me because I would rather be too warm than too cold. And this was unanticipated, but I was actually so bundled up that I felt safe doing groundwork out there uh, on the asphalt, which I never ever ever do that in the summer. So that was kind of a cool discovery, even though now I'm thinking the choreography that I was working on, I have committed myself to doing that, and we're going to have to see how that works out in the long term. But either way, thanks for coming along with me on this voyage. What are your favorite tips for spinning outside during the colder months? Please leave me a comment and let me know. And if you got anything out of this video, please leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe to help other people find it, to keep the conversation going, and of course, to help my channel grow. This video would not be possible without the kind support of all of these lovely people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon. They and the people listed down in the description help to make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Thank you one and all for your very, very generous support. And if you out there watching uh, are not currently a supporter and you'd like to become one, you can do that by heading on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up. There you can get access to a whole host of awesome rewards as well as helping me out in my mission to try and bring poi spinning and flow arts to the wider world. So go check that out please and thank you. If you'd like to check out more vlogs that I've done in a variety of aspects of flow arts culture, I will go ahead and leave a link to a playlist of them down in the description, as well as up on screen if you are watching on YouTube. Also, the YouTube algorithm thinks that you will like this top video right here based upon your past viewing habits, so maybe give that a look as well. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to get outside and flow today, bundle up for it, and I will see you with a new video very soon. Peace.